Well, it is 5.30, and at 5.30 uh, is our stated uh, beginning time, so we're going to go ahead and start our annual meeting. Good evening, and welcome to the 63rd Annual Meeting of SciFair Federal Credit Union. Due to the unprecedented circumstances of the COVID-19 pandemic, tonight's meeting is being delivered both online and in person. We have several members who have logged in and are watching from locations all over our community, and we have some members present here in our recently remodeled training lab at our corporate headquarters on Jones Road. All of our in-person attendees are social distancing and wearing masks. We hope you're staying safe and well as well. In order to open our annual meeting, I need to confirm that a quorum of members are present. Ms. Gail Parker serves as our board of directors, is serving on our board of directors as the board secretary this year. Madam Secretary, we have 53 members signed in and attending. Can you confirm that we have a quorum of members present this evening? Yes, sir, we do have a quorum. Thank you very much. With a quorum present, I'd like to officially call to order this annual meeting of SciFair Federal Credit Union. I would like to take a moment to introduce our board of directors and the chairman of the supervisory committee this evening. Mr. Chuck Brandon, board chairman, Mr. Tony Barcelona, board vice chairman, Ms. Erwan Wilson, board treasurer, Ms. Gail Parker, board secretary, Mr. Greg Axelon, board member, Dr. Debbie Emery, board member, Dr. Audrey Levy, board member, and Mr. Tony Martin, board member. I'd also like to introduce Mr. Gary Kenninger, chairman of the supervisory committee. Mr. Kenninger will introduce the other members of the supervisory committee during his report coming up in just a few minutes. At this time, I'm going to request the approval of last year's annual meeting minutes. A copy of the minutes were posted to our website a few days ago. You can find them at sciferfcu.org forward slash meeting. In order to document the approval of the minutes this year, I'm going to request that a motion be made through the chat feature inside WebEx. You can simply type motion to approve or second, and a member of our SciFair FCU team will then document those names for the minutes of this year's proceedings. If there are no additions or corrections to the minutes, I need a motion to approve the minutes as presented. And we will now wait for a, a motion in a second. Ms. Debbie Emery has made a motion to approve the minutes. Is there a second? Debbie Jackson has seconded the motion. All in favor, say aye or type aye into the chat window. Aye. 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 Any opposed? Yeah. Motion passes and the last year's minutes are now approved. Before I move into the president's report, I wanna thank each of you for taking the time out of your busy life to participate with our annual meeting. As member owner of SciFair SCU, it's an honor to reflect with you on the success of your credit union for this past year, as well as sharing some items from the year ahead. At this time, I would like to introduce the credit union's executive leadership team to ensure that we can put a face with the name tonight. The picture of each member of our executive team is on the screen next to their name. Valerie Frillman, Vice President of Human Resources and Compliance, Derek Schultz, Vice President of Information Technology and Innovation. Sean Orthoberg, Vice President of Marketing and Business Development. Tim Singer, Vice President of Finance and Accounting. Michelle Nichols, Vice President of Lending and Law Prevention. If you have any questions that are not answered during the annual meeting reports this evening, you can submit a question through WebEx by using the chat feature and any questions submitted will be answered during the new business portion of tonight's agenda. Now, please join me in looking back at the past year. Over this past year, I'm pleased to report that your credit union continues to be financially strong, sound, and growing. The credit union ended the year at $263 million in assets, an increase of $19.5 million year over year, and we've grown 43.7% since we began our 10 year vision for growth in 2013, about 6.2% on average per year. The credit union's net income for 2019 was 
$547.81. This is the second strongest net income in our organization's history, just behind the record we set in 2018. An important note is that our financial result, results include the quarter million dollar special dividend authorized by the board in March of 2019. Without the special dividend paid to members, the credit union's net income for the year would have been approximately $2,043,000. The idea of voluntarily returning extra dividends to members who are our account holders as the result of a strong financial year is unique to credit unions. As a not-for-profit financial cooperative, our account holders own the credit union and are the owners. They have the benefits of a strong financial performance year. The credit union's net worth or capital ratio ended at 9.25%, which is considered well capitalized by our regulator, the National Credit Union Administration or NCUA. Over the last several years, the credit union has worked intently to grow the credit union's net worth from 7.35% to above 9%. Following the 2007 to 2009 global recession, the credit union's board and senior leaders determined that the additional reserves were necessary to increase net worth to assets above 9%, which was achieved in 2018 and then also sustained in 2019. This decision has proven fortuitous as new economic storms have raged in 2020. Member deposits grew by 7.74%, one of the strongest deposit growths for the credit union since we began our SciFair 2022 growth strategy six years ago. Loans to members grew by 8.26% year over year. And in the 12 months from January to December 2019, SciFair SCU funded nearly $70 million in loans to our members. That represents a 75% increase in annual loan production over the past six years. The largest segment of our member loan portfolio includes $74 million in real estate loans, including first mortgages and home equity loans. $93 million in new and used vehicle loans. As of the end of the year, the credit union also has approximately $426,000 on the books in our lifestyle signature loan product, which was launched in 2018. These loans can be used for cosmetic dentistry, orthodontics, adoption, LASIK eye surgery, weight loss surgery, hearing aids, and much, much more. These loans do not require collateral and have rates as low as 5.75% APR. The credit union also has $30.5 million in unsecured loans, including $8.4 million in our successful day and night platinum credit card program, where cardholders earn rewards and also generate donations to any of 10 nonprofit organizations. These donations are part of the credit union's vision to build good into everything we do. In 2019, we donated over $4,400 to the charity selected by these cardholders, and we hope to grow that amount each year. Cypher SCU has historically maintained a very low rate of loan del delinquency and charge offs. However, towards the end of 2019, the credit union began to see an increase in these ratios and made several changes to help bring these ratios back in line with historic norms. Overall, CFFCU closed the year with a relatively low delinquency ratio of 0.99% and net charge-offs of 0.64%. However, this trend of higher losses has continued in 2020, and so, consequently, our work in this important area of financial performance has also continued. The credit union ended 2019 with 25,281 members, an increase of 0.19% year over year. That concludes my report. I will now turn the microphone over to our board chairman, Mr. Chuck Brandman, who will give the board of directors report. Thank you, Karen, and good evening, everyone. I, I am Chuck Brandman. I am currently serving as the board chairman of the board of directors. My report today is, is a tale of two cities, or actually a tale of two economies. While this annual meeting is designed to report and reflect on the state of the credit union in 2019, a lot of things have happened since the end of 2019. 2019 now seems to be a long time ago. Since we're halfway through 2020, I would be remiss if I didn't include where we are 
and where we are going in 2020. So I'll do some of both in this report. The board's focus this past year has been executing our strategic plan. A key component is new and renovated facilities, which sets the stage for superior customer service. In February last year, we opened our first fully transformed financial center at Copperfield. This was after relocating one mile from our previous location on FM 529. The new layout and business strategy for our service locations is the culmination of over four years of research, design, and planning by the board and executive leadership. Copperfield's innovative new design, knowledgeable and friendly team, and the use of cutting edge technology was designed with an emphasis on side-by-side -side collaboration and consultation with our members. While this innovative design has had to be adopted for social distancing, which gosh, is something none of us knew about five months ago, the implementation of advanced technology enabling our team to deliver one-on-one -on -one financial consultation both online and in person. The board approved the remodeling of the Jones, of rather the credit union's Jones Road branch following the same design concepts that we implemented at Copperfield. This work started in 2019 and is expected to be completed in the next few weeks. Located at the entrance of our headquarters building, the new Jones Road Financial Center will offer greater coverage and member support during peak business hours, and it's a bold new face to the neighborhoods nearby. We can't wait to share it with you. Until we do, the technology that we're implementing along with the physical remodeling supports delivering superior customer service. And then late last year, the board decided to proceed with establishing a new financial center at the Boardwalk Retail Center in Town Lake. This, this facility is on track to open next week. Just like the remodeled Jones Road Financial Center, we'll be providing services by appointment until we have relief from social distancing constraints. All of our financial centers are designed around concepts of forward-looking service delivery. While we're, while we're disappointed that we can't host open houses at the moment and begin utilizing the many innovative features of these new facilities, we're confident that your credit union is well positioned for the future. And then we can talk about updating our service and delivery systems. Throughout 2019 and continuing into this year, the board has encouraged senior leadership with many initiatives that provide better services while being more effective. Our new design for financial centers includes our interactive teller machines in the lobby. These enable our members to execute all typical transactions quickly in a secure environment, thus allowing our in-brand staff to focus on one-on-one -on -one financial consultation with members. Online banking. Our credit union's online features have continued to evolve, allowing members to make many transactions from their computers or, or smartphones. In the background, our IT group has been making continuous improvements to improve speed and, most importantly, to enhance security. Each year, we bring in external consultants to assess the security of our banking systems. Each year, our credit union gets very good grades in this important assessment. Recently, we launched a fully functional Spanish extension to our website to better serve our growing Hispanic community. Then we can talk about streamlining services. In 2019, the board and senior team took stock of the changing needs of our members and made some strategic changes to some outdated services and delivery systems. These included the consolidation of our safe deposit box service at our Skinner Road branch, adopting our in-lobby transactional services to utilize those interactive teller machines, and eliminating loose coin handling in our remodel locations. These changes are important shifts for the credit union, 
away from inefficient, costly, and outdated items, and it helps SciFair Federal Credit Union better align with our vision of 21st century financial services and consulted banking. Some other great things that happened this last year, as Cameron already talked about, we had a $250,000 special dividend payout for members in March. This special dividend is reflective of our structure as a not-for-profit financial cooperative owned by our members and sets us apart from the for-profit financial institutions. And again, as you heard in Cameron's report, 2019 was our second strongest year financially in our history of the credit union. SciFair Federal Credit Union continues to support our local schools and our enduring commitment to support teachers, students, principals, food and beverage workers, bus drivers, maintenance employees, and administrators. In 2019, SciFair FCU contributed over a quarter million dollars back into our schools. And finally, it's all about helping our members now and tomorrow. As our community navigates through the rough economic conditions resulting from the pandemic and the oil and gas downturn, your board and the executive leadership team continues to look for ways we can help our members navigate through these troubling times. Thank you again for your trust and loyalty to your member-owned credit union. I will now pass the spotlight to Gary Kinninger for the supervisory committee report. Good evening, I'm Gary Kinninger and I am the chairman of the Credit Union Supervisory Committee. During this past year, the supervisory committee was comprised of four volunteer members, including myself. Members were Ms. Lori Baker, coordinating counselor with SciFair ISD, Dr. Linda Macias, associate superintendent, curriculum instruction and accountability with SciFair ISD, and Mr. John Price, senior vice president, chief financial officer with McNair Interest. I thank each of them for their dedication, support, and work to the supervisory committee. Late, la late last July, when a position on the credit union's board of directors opened, Dr. Macias was appointed to fill that position. And I'd like to personally thank Dr. Macias for her work on our committee prior to her new position. The role of the credit union supervisor committee is to work with the board of directors and executive leadership team to ensure that the credit union adheres to regulations and policies established to safeguard members' assets. The supervisory committee oversees internal and external audit activities. For 2019, the independent external audits were conducted by the firm BKD, a certified public accounting and consulting firm. The National Credit Union Administration conducts our regulatory examinations. I'm proud to report that based on the findings of our internal audits, external audits, reports from our contracted auditors, and examinations by federal regulators, the supervisory committee concludes that the posted financials for SciFair FCU are fairly presented and comply with credit union regulations. On behalf of the entire supervisory committee, we appreciate the opportunity to represent your interests. This concludes my report. I would now like to introduce Mr. Greg Axelrod, who will give the nominating committee report. Greg? Good evening. I'm Greg Axelrod, nominating committee chairman. Thank you, Gary. This year, four positions on the board of directors are up for election. As required in our bylaws, the chairman of the board of directors appointed a nominating committee to evaluate and nominate candidates for these positions, and I chaired the committee. SciFair's board of directors are comprised of nine volunteer directors elected from the credit union's membership. Board members are elected for three-year terms and their terms are staggered to ensure continuity of oversight and governance. When a board member leaves before completing their term, a replacement candidate is appointed by the board chairman to serve until the next annual meeting where they must stand for election by the members. If elected, the candidate will complete the years remaining on the original three-year term. The nominating committee received nomination applications from two of the credit union's board members whose current terms are expiring 
and who express interest in continuing to serve the credit union's membership. Those members are Dr. Debbie Emery and Dr. Audrey Levy. The committee also reviewed and considered two of the credit union's board members who were appointed by the chairman to fill open these positions during this past year and who must stand for the election at this annual meeting. Those members are Dr. Linda Macias and Anthony Martin, and both expressed interest in continuing to serve the credit union's membership. Two months before the nominating, I'm sorry, the nomination deadline, the committee posted a request for additional applications from the credit union's membership on our website and the credit union's Facebook page. No additional applications were received. After considering the openings and the qualifications of the prospective nominees, I am happy to report that the committee nominated the following members, Dr. Debbie Emery for a three-year term, Dr. Audrey Levy for a three-year term, Dr. Linda Macias to the remaining two years of her current term, and Anthony Martin to a three-year term. As directed in our bylaws, notice of these nominations were mailed to Cypher Federal Credit Union members during the first week of January, along with information from members describing how they could nominate additional candidates by a petition signed by 1% of the credit union's members. The February 7th deadline for nominations by petition passed without additional nominations. In accordance with our bylaws, when only one member is nominated for each position to be filled, the nominees from the nominating committee shall be deemed elected by general consent and acclamation to the position and for the term that was designated when originally making their nomination. Please join me in congratulating the nominees, Debbie, Audrey, Linda, and Anthony on their election to the Credit Union's Board of Directors. This concludes the nominating committee's report. Thank you. I'd like to now give the floor back to Mr. Dickey. Thank you, Greg. And I'd like to also extend my congratulations to Debbie, Audrey, Linda, and Tony. A lot of time goes into the various meetings, attending trainings, and presentations by outside examiners and auditors, not to mention representing the credit union at dozens of community events each year. For all of these members who volunteer on our board and committees, thank you. We truly appreciate your willingness to serve. And now on to the final portions of our meeting agenda. At this time, is there any old business to come before this meeting? Seeing none, we'll proceed to new business. Is there any new business to come before this meeting? At this time, I'd like to ask my team that are administering our WebEx meeting if any questions have been posted through WebEx chat. Seeing none, we will proceed to a few closing remarks. Whether you attended in person this evening or watched online, I want to thank you for participating with Cypher Federal Credit Union's look back at the result of 2019. A copy of our full 2019 annual report is available on our website at cyfairseu.org forward slash meetings. It has a lot more great information about what your credit union accomplished this past year and a little of what we are working on in 2020. As a member-owned financial cooperative, your involvement in our annual meeting in electing members to represent you on the credit union board of directors and for the accounts and business that you entrust to us, they are greatly appreciated. We know you have many choices, and we strive to earn your business every day. We live in uncertain and turbulent times. Please stay safe and well, and let us know if there's anything we can do to help you and your family. With no further business to come before this group, we are adjourned by acclamation. Have a good evening.